in the heart of Vancouver, an ambitious project is underway, setting a new benchmark for sustainable construction. I'm Todd Best from Best Builders, and today we're in Vancouver in Mount Pleasant. We have all these beautiful heritage homes around us, and today we're looking at a project called 1908 to net zero, and we're gonna go meet Brandon and Sylvie, and they're gonna tell us a little bit more about this project. So come inside and let's get this started. Well, Todd, this, this house is tired. It's, uh, it's been a family home since 1908. We've been uh, raising our son for the first couple of years of his life here. And you can just tell it's, uh, it, it's tired. It needs a, needs a refresh. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about our vision to take you know, this, this amazing character house um, and show what's possible with sustainable construction today. And we want to see if we can do something special with our little 1908 to net zero home. Yeah, you have a very interesting project here. And I think this is why for me, I've become quite passionate about it, Brandon. I mean, obviously taking a heritage home, I love this era of construction, but being able to recycle what is usable and maybe being able to reuse it and key features in your home and then creating a net zero home from it and being able to show the rest of the community, you can still build a home that belongs in such a beautiful community as Mount Pleasant and yet take a home to net zero and give you another 300 years of life out of this home. You know, I, I kind of want to practice what I preach here a little bit because I've got this project um, and in the residential construction space, you know, we, we need to get more sustainable. We need to get more efficient, but oftentimes a lot of the, the, the tricks of the trade on the commercial side don't make their way over to the residential. And, and so I'd like to work with you to see what we can do to really drive industry forward and, and really um, uh, share an example of what's, what's possible with this project. Do you think we can get this all the way to net zero? A hundred percent, we can get this to you know, CHPA net zero standards and I think even a little beyond with all the new sustainable rules coming into place. I think there's a great opportunity here to be able to salvage a lot of material and get you your beautiful net zero home. So Todd, we're on a standard city of Vancouver 33 by 122 lot. It's not a, not a big site. No, it's not. This, uh, the house is going to be extended to make way for a couple extra bedrooms. Uh, and the downstairs suite. And then we've got the infill. There's a lot going on on a small space. I'm actually gonna try something different. I'm gonna take everything out of the inside of the house so we can donate to Habitat for Humanity, so appliances, fixtures. But then I'm actually gonna cut this house and load it onto a trailer, take it off site, and do finish my deconstruction off site at Habitat. This should shorten our timeline here by about two months. And then I can get right to lifting the house. So just to, to recap a little bit, net zero, basically all it means is that we have to find enough renewable energy on your, on your uh, lot to offset how much energy you guys and your family are going to be using once you're living in your home. So basically, if we were doing a new build, this would be pretty easy because we could, you know, factor all of this in right from the beginning of the design stage. But because we're renovating, we're working with the existing structure of your home, we're trying to keep some of those character features to, you know, have it still fit, you know, nicely into your neighborhood. So in some ways that makes it more challenging. And in fact, you know, that's that we talked about it, right? With Todd, this will be the first character renovation to meet net zero in the country. And we were talking, maybe not just thinking operational carbon, but embodied <laughs> as well. Yeah, so that's a whole different layer. And again, you're, we're kind of breaking new ground here. So there has been some work done. Um, we have a few projects now where we have tracked the embodied carbon. Um, but this again will be the first time that we're doing it for a, a deep energy retrofit project. So Brandon, for this project, we're going to try to achieve the CHBA net zero standard, which is a performance based standard. So what are we going to have to measure to make sure that we've achieved our targets? Great question. So there's kind of three main things. One will be your building envelope. So we're going to be looking at the insulation and the exterior of the building. Uh, the second thing will be your mechanical systems like your heating system and cooling system, your hot water heating system. And then the last thing we'll have to look at is the renewables because we're going to have to offset all of the energy used to heat and cool your home and, and to live there with the renewable energy provided. Sounds like a lot of coordination is required. <laughs> there is. 
I'm gonna go talk to Peter at Smithcraft Architecture to get that conversation started. We're at Form Collective, the interior designers for the project. Let's go say hi to Josefina and Peter the architect. I was just chatting with Barb about some of the high performance elements of the project and just how much coordination is going to be required for us to meet our objectives. And um, Peter, you know, a big focus of this project is keeping the heritage elements of the home while achieving those high performance standards all the way to CHPA net zero. So how's, what's the approach going to be? The approach is really trying to stay flexible so that we can marry the new with the old and maintain that portion that we have to that is the true historical portion while adding to it with new net zero type technology. And it's really taking old technology but bringing it up to the 21st century. And then of course that has a great effect on how you have to look at the interior design. Yeah, well, it'd be a very similar approach. So for the interior, now we have, you know, uh, really good materials and uh, products that have been considered uh, from an environmental perspective. So we want to make sure that we're doing the same thing with interior. So um, bringing that modern functionality while still retaining and paying respect to the exterior of the whole so that it still feels consistent from the inside and the outside. So it'll be fun. That's great. From our standpoint, we want to be asking those kinds of questions like, where are these materials made? Are they sustainable? Uh, are they local? Um, and of course, do they help us meet our performance objectives? So a lot of coordination we need to get done. I think the next step will be for us to have a round table with all the key players on the project to get coordinated. To get involved or follow along, subscribe to our channel or visit deepgreendevelopments.com. We're trying to make planet Earth healthy and good with our new house that's healthy and good. We want to help people and uh, others uh, uh, try to make new houses too.